You might think that the Mimic Tear Summon is the best Spirit Summon, but what if you suck at Elden Ring and you're just summoning a worse version of yourself? Well, here are five other Spirit Summons that are actually fantastic to use for all situations. Let's go. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Spirit Summon or Spirit Ash is. I'm really interested to see what everyone's opinion is other than the Mimic Tear. I don't want to see any comments about how great the Mimic Tear is, okay? We all agreed. Now let's go. I've tried to focus on spirit summons that aren't just your typical, you know, summon that's just going to melee attack things, things that are a little bit unique, a little bit different, things that have secrets about them or that are maybe a little bit harder to get. So we'll start off with Lutul the Headless. Now, this is probably the easiest one to get on this list. You can get this very early in the game, but he's actually very strong because you can get him so early in the game. Lutul will block damage, they guard counter, he throws his spear that he has, they will teleport around, and he does have a high health pool while still doing a lot of damage, whereas a lot of spirit summons, they'll either have a lot of health or they will do a lot of damage is not really one or the other, whereas this is one that you can get very early in the game that is a great companion to use for some of those harder fights in the very beginning. The downside here is that they will have a high FP cost at 104, I think it is, so you will need a decent amount of FP, and this is a perfect spirit summon for, say, some kind of a mage build where you will mostly be sitting in the range and you want something to deal damage in melee or keep that aggro away from you. This is a perfect spirit summon for that because of the, the high health, a little bit of damage they do. It has a shield, so we can block some of the damage that's coming towards him as well so you can sit around in the background and just deal damage from range. This spirit summon is dropped from the cemetery shade in the Tombswood catacombs. You can get this in Weeping Peninsula very early in the game, so you can go pick this up. Perfect for any range build or anything like that you want to play. Next, we've got the Black Knife Tishi, or Tish, Tishay, Tishi, Tishay, I don't know, however you say that. This will summon one of those Black Knife's assassins to fight for you rather than fighting against you, and they have the blade imbued with the Rune of Death so they can deal some of those aggressive attacks to enemies that are probably a pain in the arse for you because I know they bother the crap out of me when I'm fighting Black Knife Assassins. But these are great, all right? They have the same attack combos that you will have seen from when you're fighting the Black Knife Assassins yourself. So really good offensive melee option. There's no shield here or anything. They do have a decent dodge, so they will dodge most of the damage that comes towards them because they move around so quickly, which is the same reason why they're so annoying to fight yourself. But for the most part, they will die more or less during a longer fight, but they do deal a heaps of damage to enemies, so they're well worth picking up. This is dropped by Elenko, the Black Knife Ringleader in the Ringleaders Ever Jail in Southwestern Lernia. It is a tough fight, so be wary of that. I died to this boss probably more times than I'm willing to admit, but once you do overcome that challenge, you get a great spirit summon to use. Next is Latina the Albanuric, and Latina is a ranged support that has a bow that will deal magic damage with that bow. She acts kind of like a stationary turret, really. She won't actually move, she'll just be stuck wherever you summoned her, so be sure to summon her in a line of sight to whatever you want to attack, whether it's a boss or summon an enemy, don't summon her in a corner anywhere like you can do with all of the other summons because she won't actually move from where you summon her. But she does deal a great amount of damage with that magic bow. This is great for, say, a tank build or any kind of a melee build if you want to have some kind of ranged option helping you out in terms of bosses or any other encounters. It's great to summon her and she'll just deal chip damage while you can take the brunt of the aggro. Kind of the opposite of Lutul, where Lutul would be taking that damage. She also has a bit of her unique mechanic where if you summon her near a dire wolf, she will actually mount that dire wolf and get access to freezing mist. She won't do this from like a normal wolf like those little gray ones or the albino like leader wolves that you see. It has to be a dire wolf which is the bigger ones that have like a little bit of a mane. It has to be one of those and she will mount it and ride around and this, then she's not really a stationary turret anymore. She'll still use her bow, she'll get access to freezing mist and she'll zoom around and deal a bit of more damage. She comes from Lonia of the Lakes in the Slumbering Wolf Shack. Now she does have a quest line tied to her. You don't have to do the quest in order to get access to her spirit. Basically you just need the Hallig Tree secret medallion the right side of that and then go back here and she will have died, I guess, and her spirit is there. You can pick that up and be able to use this great spirit summon. Next is the Great Shield Soldier Ashes. And we've had some offensive options. We've had a ranged option. And now let's talk about the best defensive option. And these are these bad boys. They have a great shield. And this summons five of those Great Shield Soldier Spirits. Say that five times. <laughs> this bad boys will be practically invincible once you've upgraded them. And they won't deal heaps of damage. They deal okay damage. But realistically, you want to keep them in between you and a boss, say, for a range build or some kind maybe like a bow build this is great to have because you won't have a whole lot of fp in like a bow build but they are really great to take aggro off bosses especially highly aggressive melee bosses that will be just attacking you constantly they can take some of that aggro and block most of those attacks just be mindful though if something does get behind them where the shield isn't protecting them they will die very quickly as it's not necessarily they have a lot of health it's just that they have a great shield that they can block with for days so if they get surrounded they will die very quickly but if you're only fighting one or two enemies they will perform very well these are found 
on a corpse in the graveyard in Nokram Eternal City, which is in the underground area. You will have to have beaten Radan in order to get access to this area. So you might be able to get these very early in the game, but once you have got them, they are well worth using. The last on this list is kind of its own section, and that is the Puppets of Saluvus. And he is an NPC in the game, and I'm not going to spoil his entire quest line, but basically he will allow you to get access to some spirit summons, which are called Puppets, which are his own creation. Now, these puppets are some of the most unique spirit summons in the game, like Dolores' Sleeping Arrow will put enemies to sleep. Some enemies are immune to sleep, so just be mindful of that if you are using Dolores, but for the most part, she can put most enemies to sleep. There's also the Finger Maiden, which will use healing incantations and holy water pots. She's not a fighter per se. She's not going to fight enemies, but she will protect you yourself. There's also the Jarwet Puppet, which will throw pots and jars at enemies of all kinds of different things. It could be frost damage, it could be blood, it could be poison, it could be all sorts of things. And there is also a more traditional summon in the Night Maiden and Sorceress puppets, which will just deal damage as a combo that you can have. Now, these aren't all of the puppets that he will give you. These are the main four ones you can get from more or less doing his quest line or not doing his quest line, you still should be able to get access to these four. They're all very unique and that's why I like these puppets because they do something different than the, just the traditional summons that just deal melee damage or range damage. You know, they put enemies to sleep, they can do other kinds of elemental effects or even heal you with the Finger Maiden. Now out of these, for the most part, I have used Dolores the most because putting enemies to sleep is kind of fun and it's more valuable than some of the others because you put that enemy to sleep, you can kind of ignore it for a little bit of time while you deal damage to someone else. But for the most part, these these are all really good solid options. The Night Maiden is probably the best kind of just melee option with different attack combos. There's two of them as well, which is always beneficial. Now, if you do complete his quest line, which I'm not going to spoil really for you in this video. I haven't actually completed it myself, but if you complete his quest line, you will get access to another kind of puppet. It will be an NPC. There's two different NPCs that you can actually turn into one of his puppets and become a spirit summon themselves. So if you want to do that, you can do that and you can Google how to follow his quest line. But he has plenty of different spirit summons to give you. They're all really unique and interesting to use and some of the best in the game outside of the ones that we've mentioned in this video. There's obviously the Mimic tier, which we haven't really talked about in this video because I wanted to avoid it because everyone's using the Mimic tier, but that also comes from Nokram, the Eternal City. If you do want to go and pick that up, it comes from a locked chest in that area, but you will have to have beaten Radan, as I said, to get access to the Great Shield users as well as that Mimic tier, but there's plenty of other options other than just using the Mimic tier, which everyone seems to do, especially now that it's been nerfed. It's not as strong as it was. It doesn't have as much health. So it's worth trialing some of these different options. And I think there is some plenty of great options with spirit summons. And I really like this mechanic in Elden Ring to help with some of those more complex fights. And I mean, some of the bosses summon spirit summons. So this is a mechanic that you absolutely should be leveraging the best that you possibly can. Also, if you're interested in the build that I'm using in this video, I will have a video coming out later this week, which will go through exactly what this build is. Also check out my best weapons and where to find them video. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.